All right, we're going to take a look at a commercial or civilian MRE today. This one, along with another one from the same company, were very generously sent to me by subscriber Darren H. And uh, he actually sent me a bunch of interesting stuff, uh, which I opened in, a, in an earlier unboxing video. And I do have to apologize to Darren because I refer to him as Darren F. instead of Darren H. I'm very sorry about that. But I've been trying to find time to get around to all the stuff that he sent me. And I think we're going to start off with these civilian MREs. This one is an APAC ready meal. It's hearty beef stew. And the APAC MREs are made by Ameriqual. Ameriqual is one of the three companies, three contractors that make the genuine US MREs. I've done quite a few reviews lately on XMREs and Meal Kit Supply MREs. And those are both independent companies. So there's a bit of a difference between those two companies and then the Ameriqual, Sapaco, and Warnick, uh, the civilian versions of their genuine MREs. But let's go ahead and get to this one. We're going to look at uh, some of the similarities and some of the differences between this and the genuine version. As I said, it's made by Ameriqual. This does have a date code on it. I'm not sure how you can, well, you can see that with the printing. Um, but on the outer bag, it has a date code of 9089, which means that this was packaged on the 89th day of 2009. So we're talking about a uh, six-year-old MRE right now. So it's got some a little bit of age to it. And the packaging for the Ameriqual Apex is actually the same kind of a bag that Ameriqual uses in their Genuine MREs. The Genuine MREs, of course, come in the much, much thicker, stronger bag, but inside, the Ameriqual ones tend to be in this kind of a bag. And we'll go ahead and see what's inside of here. As a matter of fact, <laughs> this is, seems like a strange thing to get excited about, but one of the few things you can tell for sure is in here, on the outside, is this little package of pepper. And I actually think that's quite a special thing because genuine MREs come with salt, but for some reason they don't come with pepper. But almost all the civilian ones come with salt and pepper. So this bag is nowhere near as strong as the, uh, the genuine one, of course. Um, but that's because it doesn't have the specifications and requirements of the genuine MREs. It doesn't need to be as strong. And the first thing we'll see on the inside is that the APAC meals come with this information card here. This is a very useful thing. Uh, in a way, it kind of ruins the surprise of opening up an MRE. The fact that they actually give you all of the components on here. And they also give you all of the ingredients for each of the components. So it's very convenient. And then on top of all that, of course you can find that information on here, uh, in addition to the uh, nutritional information. But this also gives you nutrition facts for the entire meal. So you don't have to go ahead and go through all these and add everything up, add up all the calories and see how much sodium you're getting. It's all actually right here. So I'm going to put this here. You can pause this if, if you want to read all the nutrition facts for this meal. 1,310 calories. So right off the bat, you're getting a lot more information on this than you would get in a genuine MRE. You could find all of this stuff here in it, but you'd have to go through each each and every one. So it's, it's a nice, nice little convenience, just a nice little extra thing that they put in there. So here is the hearty beef stew. This has its own date code of 9083. So this was packaged on the 83rd day of 2009. Not surprising that it's very close to the 89th day that this was the whole meal was packaged up since this was packaged by Merrick Wall and so was the entire MRE. They have their, their own branded boxes here, APAC. And in case you do want to see it, here's the nutrition facts on this and the ingredients. One difference between most civilian MREs and the real ones is that they don't come with a side other than meal kit supply. So there's a little bit a little bit less in here than you'd find in a regular MRE. Although it does give you the full 1300 calories, which is a pretty good calorie count if you're looking to replace missing calories. So we also have an oatmeal cookie. Not surprisingly from Ameriqual packaging. Packaged by Ameriqual, not made by Ameriqual. Uh, I actually do not see... Oh, here's the date code. Date code is 9080. Some regular crackers. Also packaged by Ameriqual. The 78th day of 2009. 9078. We have a strawberry toaster pastry. Interesting to see. You can see this is uh, kind of uh, smushed a little bit in the packaging, just the way everything was lined. Uh, it be interesting to see if this is individually packaged inside of it. A uh, Kellogg's Pop-Tart or not. 
9077, the 77th day of 2009. Osmotic raisins. Some peanut butter for the crackers. The raisins have a date code of 9077 also. And then we have a tube of lemonade beverage base powder. This is supposed to go into a uh, 20 ounce bottled water. Add to 20 fluid ounces bottled water. And we have a white spoon. Let's see, it's a pretty hardy spoon. It's got a big bowl and it's pretty strong. Uh, but you do not give you the brown MRE spoon that a lot of the uh, commercial ones will give you. A moist towelette in a separate package. And, um, and this is an interesting thing that some of these will have. It's a uh, little packet of salt water. It's uh, not packaged or drinking. This is packaged to activate the flames ration heater. So you don't really get a full accessory pack. You get a spoon, a moist towelette, a um, little thing of pepper. Actually, I'm surprised because there isn't salt on this one. It's just the pepper. Uh, you're not getting the coffee and the other kind of stuff. And it has an APAC flames ration heater, which I'm not sure how different this is from the standard... MRE ration heater. It seems like it basically runs by the same principle, but you do have to add salt water instead of regular water. And we have discovered recently that um, in some of the older Flemish ration heaters, it does actually help to put some salt in to help them activate and help them work a little bit better. So I don't know if that has something to do with why they chose to go with the salt water, but it's just interesting that they actually package that with it, so you don't have to worry about having that on you. All right, and here's everything that we have in this APAC ready meal, hearty beef stew. Like I said, you can see it's a little bit lighter than a genuine MRE would be. You can see they kind of loaded up with a lot of snacks. You get the cookie, the strawberry pastry, crackers and peanut butter, you know, the raisins too. And I think that's uh, to help boost up the, uh, the calories to get it into that 1300 calorie range. I did want to point out uh, one thing I thought was interesting, that this is a 2009 meal. And in 2010, these APAC cards look a little bit different. 2009, they actually had some color and a photo of the, the entree. In 2010, it was a little bit simpler and in black and white. And I don't know to what extent that's that they changed the policy and how they were doing it, or maybe it just has something to do with a certain lot or, or something, but I just thought it was worth pointing that out. And then we can do a quick comparison between the contents of this and the contents of a 2009 Genuine Beef Stew MRE. The Genuine one would have mashed potatoes along with the, the beef stew. As I said, the Genuine MREs usually come with a side dish. It also had cheese spread, crackers, pound cake, dairy shake, Hot sauce, accessory pack at A, Flemish ration heater, hot beverage bag, which this doesn't have, and of course the regular MRE spoon. And accessory pack A has coffee in it. So that one had coffee and a dairy shake drink for uh, for drinks. It didn't have a beverage base powder like this one has. And I am kind of surprised to see that this one had so few accessories. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the uh, civilian MREs do come with uh, coffee, creamer, and sugar, and at least a napkin. Um, so this one's pretty light with the spoon, the pepper, and the moist towelette. Now we'll go ahead and review this stuff. So with this one, you obviously don't need to worry about having water on hand, because you have the salt water here. Then we're going to open up the Flames Ration Heater. Yeah, this is interesting. It's actually in this silver foil package, a silver retort pouch instead of the uh, green ones that like you see in the Genuine MREs. These, uh, I've seen these in the Canadian IMPs. And uh, obviously they're just not as concerned with the tactical in nature. And so when they're doing their own, with their own APAC uh, boxes, they can do whatever they want in the color, I guess. It is the uh, heating element. It looks like it's in pretty good shape for being about five, uh, six years old. And of course this doesn't have a fill line because you don't have to add a specific amount, you just add whatever's in here. Which is pretty convenient. Add the uh, salt water. It's definitely salty. Slide everything down. Put it over the top and lay it flat to let it get activated and that's getting hot really fast. It didn't take any time at all. But I just want to make sure there's water in all those individual heating element sections. And that's yeah, it. It's getting quite hot. I'll throw that back in here. 
you know, prop that up at an angle on a rock or something. Give that about 10 15 minutes to heat up. I gotta say, this thing is almost volcanic. This is one of the fastest acting and hottest uh, Plymouth ration heaters I've uh, experienced. Looks like that's gonna heat up pretty quickly. So we'll start checking out what else we have. We have the crackers. Let's see if we have a nice hiss on these six year old crackers. So much of a hiss, but I can hear the release of the vacuum seal. Crackers smell fine, just, uh, just that boring smell of saltines, which is certainly welcome. You don't want to smell something else. And they're actually in quite good shape, too. Put the peanut butter on those. I'm going to knead it up real good and get the oils all mixed in there. Basically, the more that you need it, the better. Looks good. Check out these osmotic raisins. Yeah. It's a little slimy in there. They smell like raisins. They look like raisins too. Oatmeal cookie. That looks really nice. It's almost, uh, it was almost overdone, which kind of gives it some nice color there. It almost, it kind of, other than being perfectly round, it has a nice, uh, almost homemade look to it. It smells good. And then finally our toast pastry, strawberry. You can see we're kind of overflowing here with snacks. And this is not individually wrapped inside of here, it's just a, uh, a loose pop tart, and it is an unfrosted strawberry toast pastry, which appears to have a little bit of oxidation here from the, the sugar. It's showing a little bit of age, it's about the first thing I've seen that I can really say it's showing much age for something that's six years old. And then our drink will be the lemonade beverage base powder. This is to add it to 20 ounces of water. I have a bottled water here that's 16.9 uh, ounces. So I'm going to go ahead and drink a little bit of that, just to make room. It doesn't have the 20 ounces, but you can see it's quite full, so I'm just going to drink a little bit of that. Just to make some room. And as I said, we do not get a hot beverage bag with this meal, but that's not a problem because it's designed to be used with a bottle of water. So hopefully you have a bottle of water. And the regular pouches generally make 12 ounces, so this is nice because Gives you enough to make 20 ounces in case you're thirsty if it's a hot day or whatever. And of course it's convenient to be able to close up a water bottle and give it a really good shape. This is cold water so I'm going to want to shake it up really good. And alright, I think that it's all mixed in there pretty good. Nice glass of lemonade and still a half a bottle. And it just leaves us with our hearty beef stew, which is not only going to be hearty, but I think it's going to be quite hot too. There's still quite a bit of heat left in that. Ow. In that flameless ration heater. I have to say, this ranks right up there with the. Uh, the entrees I've ever gotten out of a flameless ration heater. Not bad for a six year old FRH. You have two sets of tear notches. You can do it down low if you're eating it with a spoon or do it up high, as I'm going to do. Since we have a convenient tray. And there's an old standby beef stew. 
can smell it already. It smells like a Hormel or Dinty Moore canned beef stew. Very comforting kind of smell. It's a, definitely a comfort food, meat and potatoes kind of thing. Nothing fancy or particularly gourmet, but always a classic. All right, that's looking pretty good. And it's nice that it's hot too. And another quick look here at the ingredients. You can see there is some familiar stuff, but then there's a lot of interesting, just kind of weird components. I mean, they're they're just being uh, complete with everything that's in here, but a lot of the stuff, I don't even know what the stuff is. But in actually looking at it, obviously we're gonna see beef. There's a nice, nice cube of beef right here, some processed beef. We have potatoes, carrots, peas, there's some pea right here. And that's really it. It's uh, beef, potatoes, carrots, peas, and a thick brown stew sauce. Pretty simple. And let's go ahead and try it out. I want to make sure I get a little bit of everything on here. The spoon lets you get quite a bit too. Let's try this while it's still warm. Yep, it's classic comfort food. Bunch of beef right in there. It's good stuff. It's pretty salty as you'd expect. The dish does have 460 milligrams of sodium in it. And I actually find it kind of comforting because almost all the MREs have a lot of sodium, but it's surprising how bland some of them actually taste. This one, you can definitely taste the salt that you're getting. You're earning your salt, I would say. Uh, this and the, uh, the beef brisket is also really salty. And one thing I can say is if you want to know what this tastes like uh, and don't have any way of getting your hands on an MRE or I've never had one, if you've ever had uh, canned beef stew like a Dinty Moore or Hormel, that's pretty much exactly what this tastes like. Let's check everything else out. And the only thing that they gave us to put on this is uh, pepper, and I really don't think it needs that. It's quite flavorful. I'm going to try out the peanut butter and cracker. Cracker seems to be perfectly fine. I'll give that a little taste just to be sure. And yeah, it just tastes like a uh, MRE cracker. Nothing special about that, but at least it's not bad. Peanut butter is nice and smooth. Consistency is a little bit different. Sometimes they're um they're a little bit thicker and um I don't know, I want to say more um more firm. This is it's not runny, but you can kind of see it's pretty soft. It may have to do with how much I, I needed it, give it a little bit of extra kneading. But it's very good, as expected. Let's try these osmotic raisins. Raisins designed to last for a long time. And I'm not really sure the reason why, but raisins are one of the things that they seem to have a really tough time making last. Uh, obviously, an MRE is designed to last three to five years, and this is just slightly beyond that. But these, um, they have like a musty taste to them. They don't taste bad. They're soft. They feel fresh. They just uh, they just don't taste great. Um, I'll probably have a few more, but I'm not going to finish those, I don't think. It doesn't taste like anything bad, but for a six-year-old MRE, that kind of gives you the experience of having like a 15, 20-year-old MRE. I don't know if it's the packaging or what, but uh, something in there is not just not great. And I'll check out the toaster pastry. I want to save the oatmeal cookie for last. This, of course, is just basically a Pop-Tart. It just doesn't look very appetizing because it's showing its age uh, with the strawberry filling. No frosting on this one, unfortunately, but... It still tastes pretty good, uh, despite the um, the appearance, the oxidization, or whatever it is, but... Uh, filling's a little bit hard, and the, uh, the pastry part does have a, a bit of a... You know, all of a sudden I'm getting a, a musty feeling from everything. Eating it all together, it's okay, but the pastry part is a little bit of off, maybe because of the being in the packaging for six years. Ever so slightly musty. Not as bad as the uh, raisins, and neither of them are horrible. I mean, if I was starving and I needed to eat, I would definitely eat all of this stuff. The oatmeal cookie seems to have survived much better than those had, though. And you know what? I think this is guilt by association. My fingers smell musty because of touching the uh, the raisins. I think that's where the must mustiness came from on this. Let me try this one more time, sorry. 
Yeah, I have to take that back. The mustiness thing was, uh, it was the fault of the raisins, not really the Pop-Tart. As I was biting into the cookie, my fingers were holding it, I was getting that musty smell. I'm like, oh no, everything's musty. But it's just the raisins. And the cookie tastes perfectly fine, but perfectly fresh. Got a nice crunch to it, but it's not hard, it's not overly hard, it's not gonna break your teeth. Just the right amount of sweetness. It's not overly sweet, but it's also not boring. I'm gonna wash it down with some lemonade beverage powder drink. And that's good, despite the fact that I didn't have quite enough water in there. I kinda like my drinks to be a little bit strong anyway. But it's nice and refreshing. As I always say, it's just a nice little change from having plain water. So that was a look at an APAC ready meal, hearty beef stew from 2009. Thank you for watching, and thank you Darren H for sending this along. Oh, and I did forget one thing, just for the sake of comparison, I did want to mention this uh, spoon that the uh, APAC comes with. I just wanted to compare it with a standard MRE spoon. They're uh, almost the same in length. This, the white one is slightly shorter, it looks like. Maybe half an inch, a quarter of an inch, basically the same length. But the bowl on this white one is uh, it's quite a bit bigger more stuff in there. I don't have any complaints about this one. It's, it's a nice, strong, sturdy spoon. So it's definitely one of the better spoons I've seen in a commercial MRE that's not the uh, standard brown MRE spoon.